All right, let's unbox the M3 iPad Air and see if it's good for video editing. This particular model has 128 gigabytes of storage and eight gigabytes of RAM. I've been extremely curious to how much overkill is the M5 iPad Pro. This iPad is gonna tell me everything I need to know. The major thing is the M5 iPad Pro has 120 hertz display. So if you can overlook the 60 hertz of this M3 iPad Air, I think you might have a good device. And that didn't bother me at all with the A16 iPad or the iPad mini 7. Also, I would like to let you guys know that I'm doing this voiceover with the M3 iPad Air right now. I'm not using any of my external microphones. Okay, now that we got it powered on, let's see what else we got in the box. We got your instruction manual. You got a USB-C to USB-C cable. It's not color match, but it is braided. And you got a 20 watt USB-C adapter. I actually really like how this looks. It's nice and minimal. And the camera bump is not really that big. So it almost sits flat on the desk. It doesn't wobble much at all. Now, once you power this bad boy on, you're gonna be met with an update, which is always welcomed. One thing you're gonna notice instantly is how snappy touch id is on the macbooks it's not this fast but it is amazing on this device and just like the ipad a16 and the ipad mini 7 the screen is very snappy 60 hertz is not a problem if you're gonna sit here and just look for it it will be the display is also beautiful the colors are extremely vibrant this is fantastic for consuming content speaking of consuming content i like to try to create more than i consume and that's another thing that this screen will be fantastic for and speaking of creating let's go to final cut and make this five dollar a month purchase i already bought it on a macbook for 300 dollars permanently i don't know why they got this subscription based thing on the ipad now I've been super curious to what using Final Cut on an iPad is like. When it first came out to iPad around two years ago, I did buy and I uploaded a video using the M4 iPad Pro. But now two years later, I know they made some changes and I'm very curious to how well this will work out. Now this is dumbed down from the desktop, but in some ways it made it easier to create this video. And it's something so pleasing about being able to touch my media that is very hard to explain. On top of that, I'm noticing that my iPhone and my iPad work together way better than my iPhone and my MacBook. After about four hours of messing around with it, I did have a crash and that was when I started using the voiceover. I remember trying this on my M2 iPad Pro and it crashed like every 10 minutes. Something I would like to point out is you're definitely better off with either an Apple Pencil or a Magic Keyboard because the main thing I had issues with was lining up these voice clips. But overall, you can definitely edit videos with the M3 iPad Air. Actually, now I feel like it was dumb to even try it because this thing taking this like it's nothing. It's low key more fun editing on this over my MacBook because it's just more convenient. I was all over the place editing on this bad boy. As a matter of fact, I couldn't stop editing. I even brought this to work with me so I could edit in between my delivery routes. Even the export times is fast. It looked like the iPad Pro is gonna be in some trouble. If I wasn't shooting a video about this iPad, I could have used this iPad to shoot the video because the 4K camera is great, especially if you have good lighting. In conclusion, I was always somebody who doubted the air. I always thought, why would somebody get the air? Now I see why. You basically have like a MacBook Air in a tablet form. It's very light. You can edit. You can watch movies. The speakers are good. It's powerful. Like I see why people buy the Air, especially if you can get it for $100 off. You're basically future-proofing yourself with that M3 chip. But that's all I got for y'all for now. Stay blessed, not stressed. Pray more, not less. Now.